Shine.fm presents Stronger Together, a show about growing in marriage, parenting, relationships, and community. Here's Seth Tower Hurt. Stronger Together. This is a show about growing in marriage, parenting, relationships, and community. A little different as Luke from For King and Country is hanging out. And okay, I will forever associate your band with <laughs> the worst case of poison ivy I've ever had. Really? Okay. That, so, that was the six years ago situation we're talking about? <laughs> So you and I were supposed you, you guys were a brand new band, <gasps> scheduled to come That's in. That's right, you were. Yeah, and so what happened was, um, <sighs> hey, my friend Jake, I still blame you. I actually did my first. I, I enjoy mountain biking. I did my first what was called a mass start race. Yeah. So all these people going out at the same time. Somebody bumps me. I go over my handlebars. <laughs> I slide on my right forearm and tumble into poison ivy. Oh. And the poison ivy takes and gets into the cuts. And I'm like just miserable. So then you guys are supposed to come in. My great yep. aunt passed away, um, you know, which was sad, but she was 90 plus. She was a yep. Christian. So I had yep. to go home. I missed you guys. Yep. Um, immediately after the funeral, I leave and like go to urgent care because it had like started to get into my bloodstream and my fever was spiking. Oh my God. So I didn't even know that you could be like your, your blood could be allergic to poison ivy. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> and so we never met. And whenever I hear a song, there's always a little part there of you it go. that there thinks you about go. Well, my, 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 my connection here is what? It was about six years ago when we came here. And so I walked into this room and I was like, oh, this takes me back. I think we were promoting our first ever song, Busted Heart. And we came in. I think we played some songs in here. So that's my connection to the station. You, you here. can still feel it. I yeah. still feel it, man. Um, well, and, you know, I, I willfully decided not to like, Overlearn your story, okay? Because okay. I started to watch some YouTube stuff. I'm like, I just want to just talk about it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, either you or your brother, when I, I got back from the funeral, uh, everybody was like, "Oh man, you guys have a very common story." So one of the, you know, times when I felt the lowest in my life, I, I played college basketball. Yeah. I broke my femur. Yeah. Um, which is a pretty. Yeah, you can't <laughs> need that. Yeah. And so I had this whole thing that I thought like God had set me up to do. I was the only Christian on my team. You know, um, I had worked so hard uh, to get to where I was at. Yeah. And, I, you know, I thought, you know, not only is this what I love, but like, God, you have put these people in my life. And I break my femur and I come back. And within a couple of weeks, I tear out my rotator cuff on my shoulder. And then it, I, I hit this point of confusion where it's like, well, now what? You know, now I'm 19. Now what? So I wound up on a country radio station in Iowa and three months later, I wound up on Shine.fm. A year after that, I was doing a TV show and had bylines and, you know, half dozens of magazines, uh, music and, and movie critic. Yeah. And I think that from the little bits and pieces I know about, about the band, you guys have a similar story that I think everybody has in some ways in that you have been redirected through different things yeah. um, that that brought you to where you're at. Yeah. Um, and I really want to put all those pieces together. So yeah. did one of you had a basketball injury like yes, that. Yes, that was me. So I, uh, growing up, uh, in my family, there's seven kids in my family, right? Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of us and I feel like the only way that I felt like I could stand out is if I was good at sports. <laughs> and so <laughs> I, uh, I love, I love sports. I played a lot and yeah. in, uh, I played a lot of tennis growing up and that was probably my, my best sport. And then in high school, I got tired of, if I lost, it was my fault, right? And so that was what I struggled with tennis. And so I wanted to play a team sport. So I started playing a lot of basketball. And my first year I played, I just had this crazy successful season. And everybody's like, oh, this is amazing. He's only a freshman. We're going to get to have him for four years. And so I come back my sophomore year and I'm in and out of town a little bit because I was traveling with my sister, who's an artist, Rebecca St. James. And so I was in and out of town and I didn't get to quite really pour into it. And I, I said to my parents, I said, my junior year, this is it. I'm going to, I'm going to go for broke here. I'm going to pour everything I can into basketball and who knows, maybe I could get a, you know, a small scholarship at a, a college or something like that. And so I, I say, I'm not going to go out on the road. Um, I'm putting in all the time playing basketball and I'm playing my very first game, uh, that season, which can I, can I stop? Yes. Can I jump in right yeah. there? Right. So were you, were you in the band with, were you playing no, a musician? You were no, just traveling, just okay. traveling, um, but yep. still you, the decision to go into basketball actually was costing you something. I mean, yes. you were, you were giving up something that most people would love to do. That's right. right. Um, That's and right. so you go in with everything. You go in with everything. So I, and, and, and on the road, I was a lighting director and my brother, Joel, this is, as you said, before the band, but my brother, Joel was a stage manager. So we weren't doing, 
uh, music like we, we are now. And so I go in and I start playing uh, basketball in my junior year of high school. And the first game I, I, uh, of the season, I'm playing great. I think the first quarter, I was like six to eight points, six to seven rebounds. I was like, man, if I continue this on the whole game, this is going to be amazing. And I, uh, a rebound goes over my head and I'm, I, I just cut to my right and my, I blow out my knee. I tore my ACL. And uh, in, in that instant, I mean, I was that that idea of basketball that, that's yeah it was, it was gone and, and and it was funny my my uh my family always have this tradition at thanksgiving to kind of go around and, and say the things that we're thankful for and i had to actually mourn the fact because i didn't really have a whole lot to be thankful for in that moment I, I the truth is there was much to be thankful for but in my 16 year old mind i was i had to give up a dream i had to mourn a dream of being able to play sports and so it was soon after that i actually went to my mom similar to come kind of your situation where you're like i don't know what to do like everybody else has got this thing i don't know what to do uh, you know I, I just kind of remember just staring off into space a lot for two yeah. or three weeks it's like <laughs> what do you do you know and so I, I went to my mom i was like mom everybody else in the family's got this thing you know, they've all, you know, Joel was kind of subtly pursuing music. And my brother Ben was a film director. And my brother Daniel had this business. You know, everybody kind of had their thing. And I was, I was the sports guy and that was taken from me. And so I said, I, I said that all to her. And she says, look, I believe by the time you graduate high school, there's going to be one thing left for you to do. So sure enough, I graduate high school. My brother Joel comes to me and says, hey, what do you think about writing some songs and recording and just seeing where this thing goes? And, and we've been doing that ever since. Dang, man. Yeah. Isn't that funny? That is, that's very, um, it's, it's eerie. Like how, you know, how similar, yeah. Different years, different courts, same injury. Um, and, and then it leads us to the same room, right? Yeah. Like it's, it's funny how God puts those things together. You know, when you were in that, I, I'm, I'm curious as to, you know, obviously you got a lot of good people around you, right. And in, in yeah. your family and, you know, and I'm assuming the, the kind of the, the opportunity for like mentorship with the way you grew up, your sister yeah. being super successful, you get to meet a lot of people who've been through a lot of real stuff, seeing God, you know, come through. Right. Yeah. What are you thinking? You're 16 years old, uh, you know, at that time, like, and I do think, I do think you got to mourn something like when you mm -hmm. lose it, I think you got to legitimately feel the pain. Right. And then after that, did you feel God start to speak to you? immediately or it wasn't until your mom said something because you know i think sometimes there is a lot of um you know kind of like spiritual growth in that wandering around yeah. afterwards you know yeah. kind of the wandering the desert personally yeah uh i, th I think that we always want god to move a li little bit quicker than he does sometimes yeah so that's the temptation is is to kind of get out in front of god where i think he wants us to kind of be in the tension of it almost and be like man i lost a dream and I, I, it's, it's good for me to mourn that. And then it's, and I think, you know, God's on the other side sitting there. Yeah. It's good for you. Good for you to go through this so you can turn to me, you know, yeah. so you, so I can be the person that's kind of, hopefully you're looking to me for, for your next step, not necessarily 10 steps down the road, but just your next step. And so it was through conversations with my mother. It was through these things. And I just started to feel like, you know what, uh, you know, our talents and the things that we have, those aren't the things that define us. They're gifts and God wants us to use our gifts, but that's not what makes us who we are. And that was important for me to, to learn at, at a young age, even with what we do now. It's like, yeah, I, I sing and I perform, I do, but that's not what makes me who, who I truly am at the core of who I am. Uh, that's just a byproduct, I think, of doing the best I can to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Yeah. And, you know, we're going to jump around a, a little bit because you've had a couple significant things happen. But, you know, one of the things that, that I kind of want to catch up with you on um, is just the fact that um, you guys have done a movie about human trafficking. I want to, yeah. you know, just a quick aside about why I haven't seen it. I'm actually a film and TV critic for uh, Relevant Magazine. Yeah. So I actually get assigned, <laughs> like, I have to see a movie every week. And yeah. so people are like, yeah. why haven't you seen that? I'm like, well, you're a movie critic. Well, I actually like it's part of my job you know yeah. and so i haven't had a chance to check it out yet yeah. and i thought it was kind of cool to just come in and talk to you about this had you not learned that god had something else for you when you were 16 like we're talking about real life events in you know fighting human trafficking wouldn't have happened 10 plus years later yeah no you're absolutely right man i, I, I think i'm always you know People often think coincidence, right? It's just, a, it's amazing how that happened that you tore your ACL and you ended up doing this and you went, that's just not, I don't, I don't believe that's the way that God works, you know? Yeah. And, and, and so for us to, uh, you know, I'm not a filmmaker, uh, my brother Ben is, but yeah. so when we start on this idea of priceless, one of the things that we've talked about from the beginning of our career is we say uh, to, to ladies, hey, culture says for you to talk and act like you're cheap, but we believe that there's a God who says that you're priceless. 
And when we first started saying that, honestly, probably when we came by this this radio station about six years ago, that was kind of in its infancy. Uh, it became something that people would come to our shows and be like, oh, that's cool. You guys play those songs. I heard that song. On the now, that's talk in the middle that you spoke about Priceless. That was the thing that people were, were leaving with. And so after a few years, we, we went to our older brother, Ben, and we said, hey, this is one of the most potent things that we talk about. What if we were to make a movie about this? And Which, he was, <laughs> <laughs> what if we make a movie about a song interlude? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What if we make a movie about this this idea called uh, Priceless? I mean, there's a, there's an Angry Birds game. So yeah, there you it's go. not the craziest thing <laughs> in the yeah, whole world, exactly, right? Exactly. <laughs> so um, he was like, yeah, let's do it. And that's when kind of this pilgrimage of raising, you know, millions of dollars. And, you know, we're musicians. We don't really do that, right? And and But yet, uh, when God puts a dream in, in your heart, and, and if you are... Uh, pursuing God through those things, you get to see how God can say, hey, this isn't necessarily something that you probably naturally feel like you have the ability to do, but I enable the ones who uh, I enable, even whether or not they have the gifts or talents at the time or not, I can give them those gifts. I can give them those talents. I can give them those, those, those abilities. And so we ended up making this movie, uh, Priceless, which is uh, to this day probably the biggest undertaking that we've uh, we've ever taken on. Yeah, yeah. That's um, it's funny, you know, g getting to work in this, and that's one of the things casual people ask me is like, "Hey, how come, you know?" And actually, they're the Christian film industry is growing and there's better stuff coming out. And yeah. it's like, Hey, why, why didn't this happen? Why isn't there something like this every weekend? Cause it's so hard. It's so hard, it's so hard, so hard. to pull together. Um, going back and I, I kind of keep jumping the timeline, right? Yeah. Because this, like, I, I think what we're really finding here is that, that, um, connection between disappointment, uh, and God using you far beyond what you thought. Right. Yeah. Um, when you first started writing songs, did you guys ever, I mean, were you dreaming or imagining that eventually you could maybe speak into major social issues or, I mean, where, do, where did you start as songwriters? Right. Because, yeah. you know, and it's funny, I did get enough YouTube before I, I just stopped and said, I'm just going to talk to him Yeah, that, um, you know, some people, a lot of people don't even it, like it clicked for them later that your sister had a very successful yeah. music career. Right. But yeah. she was writing a lot out of her own experience yeah. as starting at like a 16 year old girl. Right. Yeah. And yeah. then you know, kind of as she grew, the records grew yep. with her. Yep. Where did you, did you guys start writing from the same spot? Um, or were, did you, you know, were you, were you kind of pulling in and seeing like, you know, uh, with, with the whole priceless thing, it's like, you're seeing things happen around you and you're <laughs> reacting to, I mean, in this case, the evils of, uh, of some very, you know, terrible things in modern culture. Yeah. I think that, uh, <laughs> hard to admit, but I think when you start out in music, you, you, you just want to be cool, right? <laughs> and so you just try it, whatever the cool concepts that you think are cool, those are the things that you, you start writing. Now, after you write hundreds of songs and, and nobody's connecting to those songs that you think is, are cool, you start to go, what is it that makes art memorable? What is it that makes art like permeate your skull, your brain, that you remember it, that it sticks with you? And most of the time, that's authenticity, like yeah. things that you're actually going through. Because, for instance, I, I had to, to learn that uh, I think there was a point in my life, in my Christian walk, that I thought, well, if I'm going through X, Y, or Z, I'm the only one in the world that's going through these things. And obviously, when I started uh, allowing myself to actually write about these things, they, these songs ended up making it on albums. And I'd have people come up and say, Luke, you have no idea. And that song that you wrote, that's the thing that I've been walking through for the last several years. And then you start to go, wait a second, I'm not alone in this? Like other people have the same thoughts. Other people have had sickness ruin their life. Other people have had ACL surgeries and other people have leg injuries and those types of things. It, 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 that's what makes art permeate your, your skull is when, when people can identify with another hurting soul. And doesn't all have to be sad. I've often said to Joe, I said, I think that art is good art when you either are writing about the delights of life or the sorrows of life. Because for the most part, we don't remember the middle. Yeah. When you think about when you're driving along on the highway, you see hundreds of thousands of those white <laughs> dots, right? Yeah. But you don't, do you ever really remember the white dot? Well, I, I was don't. just thinking, I have yet to hear a song, a hit song, uh, about being in line at McDonald's waiting for your coffee. Yeah, you just don't. So th th that's what you write about. You write yeah. about the highs. You write about the lows. And that's because that's what we remember. That's what we connect with. And, and our hope is to write authentic, real music that connects to people's hearts because uh, that's what I think that I'm designed to do right now. I, you got a second a second life event that I, I want to dive into. I'm going to have to yeah. hillbilly up here for just a minute. Yeah. Um, so just a, a tiny backstory. 
I decided to move to Montana uh, probably about four or five years ago. Uh, and my my great grandfather had been kicked out of med school for fist fighting and honest to goodness hopped a freight train and was a cowboy in Montana. And I was like, I'm just going to go do it. I kind of felt get this like out of your life. system, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. And so I got a job out there. I flew out, got a job back home. I'm bow hunting. Uh, cell phone, you know, vibrates I'm like, Oh, it's my job. It's my new job. Better, better pick it up even though I'm out deer hunting. So I pick up the phone, which kicks a deer out of the bush that I would have gotten. And I find out that I'm not going. Uh, they're like, oh, sorry, we're going to hiring freeze. We can't hire anybody. There's nobody at this company getting hired. You can't come. And I'm just sitting there again. And it's the, it's the, the basketball thing all over again. Long story short, you know, my now wife and I knew each other, but like it wasn't really a thing. And I was getting partially because I was you know getting ready to move out of town. And uh, yeah. it had that phone call not happened. And again, it's like the thing that I thought I was being robbed of yeah. was the thing that was the gift. Yeah, it was the gift. And so I don't know because I decided to stop YouTubing and just find yeah. out like with the members of the audience who don't know. Right. Yeah. So one of you went through a major illness. And I, yeah. I have no idea. Yeah. So it's you, me. <laughs> it's you. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, so several years ago, I, um, when I would have only been about probably about a year after we came and visited this station actually for the first time, which was, so we're talking about five years ago now. I, uh, I was in the midst of uh, doing a lot of, uh, our, our career was moving along. We went out and we were doing our first headline tour, but you know, it was, it was rough and ready, van and trailer. You're sleeping on the, the benches of these uh, vans. I mean, it's, it's, it was tough going. You're not sleeping a ton, oh, and what, stressful. Yeah, and what people don't realize is the first time they hear a song on the radio, they're like, oh, so this is a new artist. No, that was a new artist you know, five plus years ago. Sometimes. And that new artist sometimes played for eight people yeah. and oh, wondered if they could even physically keep going. Uh, exactly. Exactly. So when I was in the midst of that, I was, uh, my wife was six months pregnant and we were trying to buy our first house. And, uh, you know, you take any one of those things, usually it's a stressful season. Oh, and yeah. you know, we had like three or four that were just like so insanely stressful. And so my body started to kind of fail. I started my, I, I, I got diagnosed with a digestive disorder and when I got diagnosed, I, I felt like the thing to do was is actually to push through. Hey, I'm a man. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna work harder. And when when you have a an autoimmune autoimmune disease, that's literally the opposite thing that you because should do. Because it just triggers it, it more. It just goes more. It gets worse and worse and worse. And so I got down to, you know, I'm six foot four. I don't know how yeah. tall you are. Six You're five. tall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I got down to 125 pounds and I oh looked like I had survived a concentration camp. I mean, I just was oh. just, my stomach was going in. I looked terrible. I had no muscle on my arms. Could at all. you eat or could you, um, uh, you just weren't getting nutrients? Diff- yeah, wasn't you weren't getting nutrients. nutrients. Yeah, oh exactly. And so I had to come off the road and I was off the road for about uh, two and a half months. And then there was about a month where I was off that, because everybody thought, hey, if Luke, Luke gets off the road, he's going to be okay. Uh, and I was off the, mo- the road for about, a month and I, I wasn't really getting any better. I, you know, I probably could have been actually getting worse. And I just had this moment where, and I was, you know, I was going to all the doctors and we were, we were trying to figure it out and I was doing all this stuff. And, but there was a moment, uh, where I just on the spiritual level, I was trying to figure out, I was like, God, why, why am I so sick? You know, I, I, I think I'm out there doing the things you've asked me to do. And I'm chasing the dreams that I feel like you've implanted, you know, I'm doing what I feel like is the right thing to do. And yet I feel very, you know, I'm, I'm home, I'm bedridden, can't get, I can't hold my six month old baby. And my wife came to me one particular night and she said, uh, Luke, you just can't leave me here. So then my wife is coming to me saying, don't die. And I was like, man, I'm 26 years old. I just don't feel like this is, I, I, to God, I don't feel like this is fair. And, and when you pray these unfiltered prayers, I think God does amazing things when we pray unfiltered prayers because a lot of times I think when we pray we feel like we're on like a we're at the podium we're like the pastor and our prayers have to be eloquent and beautiful I think God just wants his guttural real honest prayers from us and so I just prayed that prayer God why am I so sick and I felt this wave of peace come over me and I felt God just say look I I don't need your gifts I don't need your talents I don't need another song from you I don't need a show I don't need more of you I just want your heart I just want you. I want your attention. I want you, this conversation. I want, I want you. And man, pretty much immediately, uh, this sickness that I was kind of sometimes feeling, you know, playing the victim a little bit, you know, why, oh Lord, why? 
it turns to just being so grateful that God allowed me to get sick to get my attention, for me to go, oh, this is what it's about. It's not about more shows. It's not about bigger songs. It's not about this. It's about, it's about being close and intimate with, with God. That's, that's what my, I, I wake up and I sometimes get distracted, but I wake up with the mindset of trying to be and practice intimacy with Jesus. Man. And you know, one of the things I'm thinking about when you're telling me that story, I'm so glad I didn't YouTube it more because yeah. I can feel it, you know, with people who are here feeling it for the first time. But like, we always want like the, you know, kind of like instant coffee answer to something. Right. Yeah. And yeah. <clears throat> If you don't learn whatever that thing is, if you can, you know, now imagine your life five years down the road without like the wisdom and the, you know, and uh, the closeness that you have with God because you went through that. Yeah. Uh, man, I mean, you're a different person in five years if you Absolutely. don't have that. Absolutely. You know, and, and maybe it's harder to learn it at that time. You know, so it's like maybe the pain is actually saving you a lot yeah, of pain. I mean, I don't time. think, I, I've said this many, many times, I don't think any of us desire pain, right? No. I don't think any of us are just desiring and looking at our life saying, all right, I got through that one. God, when are you going to put me through another one? I don't think that that's natural. I mean, we're all de we all desire to live, yeah. right? And we all desire to live a healthy, fruitful life. We don't want pain. But pain does happen. And what I find fascinating is, is I've never known somebody who's walking with Jesus to walk through a painful situation and not come out the other side feeling closer to Jesus. Yeah. So isn't that interesting how that works? Because it's the very thing that we're so afraid of walking through is actually sometimes the things that we become most grateful for. And, and we get, get to the other side and we go, man, I'm, I'm a different person, as you said. I'm, I'm no longer the same person. Can, I, what, is your, um, what, did, what was your brother going through at that time? Because I can't imagine also somebody, the, you know, the people who love you seeing you through that is just awful, right? Yeah. Um, and also it's like, you know, you, you know, really kind of binging on the records coming yeah. into this into, into today. Yeah. Um, not, not being like, Hey, I just want to know the music. I, I want to get into side with kind of the seasons of life of the yeah. different records you guys have put out. I mean, so you are very much a partnership. Yeah. Uh, and it's not like one of us like, Hey, well I've got some songs and I don't want to do it by myself and I'll be lonely. So you come with me. This no. is, yeah. uh, this is a creative meeting in the minds. Yeah, right. And so, um, I mean, man, he, he, he is for King and country is not for King and country without both of you. Right? right. So what, you know, has he man, shared he, with you what he was oh going man, through? He, so, uh, a little bit of more of a backstory. So when, when I was playing the, the basketball and all that, Joel was subtly trying to pursue a, a musical career himself. And it was after he kind of, I don't want to say after that failed, but it was after a while he, he was like, I don't know if I'm good at doing this myself. And that's when he asked me to come on. But I think there was always something in the back of his mind, like, man, should I, you know, is that, should I go do something myself? Is that worthwhile? Yada, yada, yada. So when we walked through the sickness and I was away for two and a half months, um, he would call me up and he would say, man, uh, I know that our relationship, cause Joel and I were not particularly close before we started doing music together. And so not that there's always been tension necessarily. Yeah. But, there, but there's just, seven you, kids. There's so seven you, kids. You got a lot yeah, of options. Yeah, you got a lot, yeah, so, so he actually came to me one day and he's like, man, um, we're going to be fine out here. But just so you know, I, I don't ever want to do music by myself. And, 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 and it wasn't like we had spoken about it, but I think we both kind of knew that that's the way Joel had started out. And he actually got to a point where he was like, I don't like seeing you hurt. I don't like seeing you. But because I feel like I'm out here doing this subtly for you, I can do that with the thought knowing that and as long as if you're healthy enough, that you're coming back out and you're going to be with me and we're going to do this together. And it was a really cool thing for our relationship because I was having a conversation with somebody yesterday. I was like, man, I don't ever care to do music without my brother. I just don't like, you know, you have all these bands, maybe should I say DC talk where they go off and they all got to yeah, go yeah, do their yeah. different things. Uh, Joel and I, you know, I, I'm not, I don't, I'm not going to speak for him, but for me, I don't ever care to be that story. I, th I think it's just, it's him or I are broke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, can we fast forward? So you, uh, one of your kids was just in here. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where he went. I think yeah. he's with your dad. Yeah, right? He's with my dad. Okay. Yeah. Um, because, Okay, he's not old enough. He's what, like two, three? Yeah, he's two. Okay, because you were singing him a song. Yeah, two going, two on, going three. on three. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> you know, like as as your kids get to an age where you know you want to be able to share some life with them, yeah. right? Like, what do you tell them about the disappointments and about the redirections, knowing that man, like a t you know, you think about a two year old, it's like, man, I just want you to there's that Taylor Swift song, right? Like never grow up. Like I never want to see you go through. I never want to see you blow out your knee and lose, you know, yeah. and lose your sports career when you're 16 yeah. years old. Right. Yeah. Um, but, but you know that, that those kids are going to go somewhere where it's going to hurt. Right. Cause yeah. everybody does. So what do you, 
Like, what do you tell them? I think that's well, that's a difficult question because um, it's it's, it's it, it even starts now. It, yeah, you know, I've got a four year old as well, and I actually have a three month old as well. And so, uh, for instance, when I you know Phoenix, he's two years old. When he gets overtired, he you know obviously they start complaining and they start getting grumpy or whatever. And out here on the road, I put him in his bunk, and sometimes I have to just say, buddy. You got to go to bed. I'm walking away and he'll be crying. Daddy, would you stay with me? Snuggle with me. Would you please? Oh, yeah. And I just, and I, I, I leave him in the tension and I walk away. Most of the time, seven minutes later, he's asleep. Yeah. But uh, you have to kind of go through some of the, the difficulties of he's crying. He's, he's upset. And I think it's a little bit like life. I'm walking through basketball and, and I'm kind of kicking and screaming. And God kind of allows me to go through that. And I come out the side, at the other side better. And that's what I would hope to tell the kids is, hey, guys, I, I know that we don't desire to walk through pain. I know we don't desire to go through these, struggle, these difficult things. But walking through hardship builds character, builds integrity, builds, I think that we get to see God through, for instance, I'm from Australia. And yeah. we have about 5% Christians in Australia. You know why there's not many Christians in Australia? And this is hard to admit. Um, it's because we don't need God down there. We do, but they don't see an evidence and a need for Jesus. So most of them are atheists because we're very financially well off and they just look at their life and they go, we got everything we need. Why, why God? Yeah. Go to China, China, you know, Jesus is exploding over there. Why? Cause they need, to, they need Jesus to show up. So when we talk about praying unfiltered prayers and, and expecting Jesus to do something, they have to, they don't have a choice in China. But rather than to just see God, it's illegal for me to be a Christian. So when I look at this uh, situation where I'm, you know, I'm going to a meeting and I don't want the, the bad guys or whoever to find out that I'm there, what do you do? You get on your hands and knees, God. You are faithful. You're going to protect me. I'm here. And sometimes, sometimes I get caught. Sometimes I go to jail. And from what I, the stories that I've read, it, it's more potent sometimes when they're in the jail because they get to talk to all the, inma- the other folks that are there about Jesus. And all of a sudden little revivals are taking place in those. So my point is, is it, it was as parents, we can't overprotect our kids from, and try to avoid pain because when I look at my life, that's what's made me not who I am, but that's what's given me the opportunity to see Jesus very clearly. Yeah. And I don't want to take that from my kids. Yeah. I need to allow them to go through things so that they can have, hopefully have that, that walk that I'm looking and expecting to see evidence of Jesus day in, day out. It's not just a, a, a transactional thing where one moment I said, you know, I need uh, Jesus forgive my sins and, and I move on. No, it needs to be a day in, day out thing. Yeah. Uh, I um, I got a chance to teach in college at a pretty young age. I was, you know, teaching downtown Chicago. And I remember I had a, uh, I was 29. I had a 25 year old student's mom call me and I'm like, okay, I think something went wrong here. <laughs> It's like, okay, I don't think you were maybe raising this kid like they were going to be an adult someday. Yeah. Uh, and if you don't do that, then, you know, absolutely, you're thinking about that now with your two and four year old and three month old even like, yeah. hey, these guys got to go out and step into what God's got for them. And I can't always grab their hand. They're going to go somewhere I had somebody, me. I had somebody, uh, I asked somebody, hey, I, was, I, I said, hey, how do you, how do you teach Jesus to kids? Not just like Bible stories and this. We'll do that. And, and we want to do that. I want them to love the Bible. I want them to do this. But how do you, how do you really teach these kids Jesus? And they said, they looked at me and they said, the parents have to show evidence for Jesus in their own lives. If, if a kid sees evidence of Jesus in their parents, they'll, they'll choose to follow Jesus. And Man. I was like, oh. It <laughs> was a big one for me. It got very real, got very, very quick. real. You know, just as we wrap this thing up, um, you guys did just drop a, a Christmas record, yes, um, which was live. So I'm like, did yeah. you do a live Christmas record in September? It'd be like, hey, everybody, <laughs> feel Christmassy. Yeah, Let's yeah, do yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. No, we. Uh, so we didn't even necessarily know we were going to release a a Christmas album last year, but last Christmas we went out and we just had a great great time. In the past, I'd kind of been. I don't really want to do Christmas tours because I just want to be home with family and this, that, yeah. and the other. And then last Christmas we had this opportunity. It was like, you know what? 
let's go out and do a Christmas album. Well, Unbeknownst to Us becomes our favorite tour that we've ever done. It's just, <laughs> you're singing the greatest songs ever written. It's just amazing. It's so fun. And so uh, we had this idea of doing a live stream. Well, to do a live stream, we needed to obviously record it the right way and be able yeah. to have it be done in a high quality way. So we, we do a live stream, but we record everything at the same time. And so at that point, we had everything and we kind of were like twiddling our thumbs thinking, well, we loved this. We loved the songs. We loved the renditions. Why don't we just release a Christmas album next year? And so that's what we did. We went okay. in, obviously mixed it up. And but we, I don't I don't believe we did any overdubs or anything. It's just you all just real. It out there. It's just all, all real. It's just been mixed and it's been doctored a little bit on different things. But it is just what it is. What happened that night is, is what took place. You know, one of the things I was thinking about as I was getting ready to step into this, right? It's like, I'm like, man, we don't need to tell any of these stories, of the existing hit songs, because, um, you know, man, people love you guys. So I, I just want to go into, there's a next record somewhere, right? It's yeah. in a notebook, it's in demos, you yeah. know, it's, it's actually not, in the back of the bus right now. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Are you? Uh, well, yeah. We, we, we've, we've, uh, got a producer out on the road with us right now and we're, uh, 60 to 70% done. I would say we don't have anything finished, finished, but we're getting close. Okay. You can't record while you're driving down the road, right? No, but you can edit and okay. do a lot of other things. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, we had a perfect take. And then, yeah. man, yeah. The, the guy ran over a raccoon. And, there you go. And, there yeah. you go. Uh, so take me into, like, what what in you is going into this record? What have you learned? You know, what has God kind of put in your life that's going into this record? Yeah, well, this the, the past album, you know, I, did, I wrote a lot about sickness. You know, yeah. I wrote a lot about some difficult things. And uh, I think this next album... Uh, is going to be a lot more about joy, you know, okay. just a, a joy in the midst of difficulty. I think I look at our nation. I think our nation needs great joy I just, and, and not happiness, great joy. And joy is something that I think uh, is chosen as well. Like you can, you can wake up every morning and decide, am I going to be joyful today or am I going to be depressive? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I think we, we want to, to talk about joy. Joy comes from Jesus. And so if we've got Jesus, then we really should have a lot of joy. But sometimes we have to choose that. We have to choose uh, joy in our day in and in our day out. And so the, the, the first the song that we'll probably release is just a song simply called Joy that we're excited. It's, and it's not saying that everything's hunky-dory, but uh, joy is really, really powerful. Where, you know, where does, where does our strength come from? Our strength comes from having the joy that Jesus gives us. So it's very important for us. Luke, uh, the band is for King and Country. The Christmas record is um, is out there right now. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you, do you want to throw a, a kind of sort of time period on this or for the new album? For the new record, it'll yeah. be most likely April May unless we goof it up. <laughs> 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 so as long as the bus, or is this whole thing going to be done on a bus? Uh, uh, not the whole thing, but pretty good portion of it that, will be. We might no. be coming and sing vocals here at the studio <laughs> later on. We'll find out. <laughs> This is Stronger Together. It's shine.fm. That was Stronger Together, a show about growing in marriage, parenting, relationships, and community. Subscribe to the shine.fm podcast to catch every episode of Stronger Together. Available on the iTunes podcast app and wherever podcasts are available.